Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? Okay, that should be good. Uh, yeah, gonna be analyzing games. Uh, been a while since I did one of these, but uh, yeah, I'm happy to just take a look at some games, especially uh, if you guys have specific questions about your game. That would be, I think, the most instructive for all. If, you, if there is a certain position, you didn't know what to do. Uh, so to submit your games, we have the command submit, and you either whisper to Chess Dojo Live on Twitch, or you can DM your game uh, to me via Discord, if you're on the Discord. And um, yeah, happy to take a look at uh, all games. Okay, Steve, so game against the Catalan, got it. All right, let's start with this one. Give me a sec to, uh, to put it in here. Okay. Wait, is it, was it the Catalan or was it a Sicilian with G3, Steve? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I was expecting one thing, but then <laughs> is this the one we're, we're talking about? Or was it an actual, an actual Catalan? Okay, this one. So G3 Sicilian, close Sicilian. Yeah, we can definitely talk about this one. Um, let me just uh, copy it in. So we were, we were black in this game. Oh, let me input your ratings because people always end up end up asking. Yeah, so, okay, white plays g3. So let's actually, we can just talk a little bit about what white is aiming for with this kind of move. Um, I actually often refer to this one as a king's Indian attack because um, white's idea often is to play king's Indian attack kind of setup, like bishop g2, knight comes to d2, and then white looks to play on the king side. But of course there are many other ways to play it. That's just one kind of possibility. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's see how we reacted to this one. So bishop g2, then we played knight c6. Yeah, why not take the pawn, Steve? What happened, uh, what happened with this one? Is there something we were worried about here, or? <laughs> We just didn't notice, I'm guessing, that the pawn was just left left undefended. Yeah, this happens a lot. Like, we're just trying to get our pieces out and just making our moves. But yeah, we got to look at what the opponent is doing. And this move, yeah, hit something. Um, but okay, let's. we can just talk about the setup. So we fought for the center. That looks cool. And traded some pieces, bishop e7. Ended up getting kind of close position. Yeah, where white has a little bit more space. So maybe we ended up a little bit, a little bit worse in this game. Uh, a little bit passive. Yeah, so there are different ways to play this one. 
Uh, a very common setup from Black's point of view is to play like a dragon type of setup. And now even though I know Steve doesn't play the dragon, Steve plays a Nidorf, you can choose different setups based on what the opponent is doing, right? And here a6 wouldn't really be so needed. Um, so this one is very common because I think it gives black a pretty simple game. And the idea here, the plan, is to play rook to b8 and push the b-pawn forward. b5, b4, and looking to one day create some play on uh, the queen side. And so this knight can transfer to like d7 and b6 to open up the bishop or go to e5. So this is kind of one possibility. Um, there are certainly other ways of playing these positions as well. You can play them with e6 and just put the bishop on e7. And this might be closer to like a Nidorf kind of structure, so you might even prefer this type of position. Which this is what I would do as black against the close Sicilian in quite a few games where I play like similar setups. And I think it's actually very, just very easy for black. You don't let white play e5 without allowing a lot of trades. So white doesn't get their typical king side play. And then you just castle and go bishop d7, rook c8, push on the queen side and just kind of slowly get counterplay. Um, so this is just another way to do it. With e5, the problem with this one is that we're giving away the d5 square. And so this is a little bit inflexible. If I was your opponent, what I would do is I would probably put my pawn on c3. And the idea here would be to control the d4 square, whereas we've given up the d5 square. Um, I'm sure it's still a very playable position for black. So I don't think what you've done is so criminal. Just leads to a different kind of structure where maybe we develop our pieces, something like this. I wouldn't want to give up the light square bishop here because I feel like this is kind of an important piece. And if we play bishop g4 and white plays h3, we're kind of either locking the bishop on g6 where it's going to be passive or trading it, which I think probably not good. So I would probably put the bishop on e6. And I think as black, you can play for d5. You can try to make this pawn break and get some space in the center. So this, I think, is fully playable as long as you play for this kind of d5 move. Yeah. Um, thoughts on 98 and f5? I don't know. Might be a reasonable idea. Seems a little risky because we're kind of undeveloping and our rooks are going to be disconnected for a while, but could be playable. I'm not really sure. It's not something I've seen often in these positions, so hard to say. Um, so yeah, still a balanced game. Uh, knight c3, we go here, knight d4, and I guess the issue is we end up trading off two sets of minor pieces and we're just left with like a bad bishop on e7. So I would actually even be worried about something like bishop g5. And then white's idea would be to just take on f6 and just plop the knight on d5 and yeah, that seems kind of tough for black, you know. Yeah, so, I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe here there was um, no reason to trade right away, just to kind of avoid that fate. Maybe just a developing move like bishop e7 would be my choice because white is not really threatening to take on d4. If they take with the bishop, then they're giving up kind of an important dark squared bishop, and I think you'd be fine here. And you don't have to even give up your light squared bishop anymore. You can still drop back if you need to. So maybe we took on f3 a little bit too quickly. 
Yeah, and in general, right, I think Black's Bishop would be better on e6, yeah. Because then you're kind of covering your one your one weak square. And if you can cover this one, then I think we're going to be more or less okay. Yeah. Um, but, uh, okay, in general, Steve, do you feel like you have a good setup for next time, even either playing like a dragon type of approach or let's say knight or type of approach. Both are kind of okay here. And then yeah, rook b8 and b5 is always typical plan. So here, I mean, white, I think, was definitely better, but, um... After f4, e takes f4, white really needed to keep the structure with g takes to control the e5 square. In the game, white played knight takes, which I think definitely gives black kind of a freer hand, because you get to play knight e5. And now things are definitely not as bad because you have a very nice knight on e5. Oh, got the rook. There was an 87. But we covered it. Nice. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to submit a game, either Whispering or Discord is fine. Either way. Uh, yes, yeah, Steve. Hope that uh, hope that helps. Okay, I'm gonna go to uh, Crow's game. So Crow had questions about the opening. Yeah, but how do I, oh, here we go. All right, Kroos, let me know what your, what your questions were. So we got 1363 against 1500. Oh, thanks Steve, much appreciated. I didn't see the donation yeah, with my current setup, for some reason, I can't see donations, but thank you so much. <laughs> uh, all right, so. We're playing black. We play the Sicilian because Bobby Fischer played it. That's that's fine. Good a reason as any. He knew a thing or two about chess, so why not? Why not play his openings? All right, so Nidorf, very cool. Bishop d2, e6. So yeah, we're just developing this bishop to e7. Everything seems super logical. Castle, bishop e3. Now we played knight c6, queen d2. We took this one. We go e5, b5, and e5. And then finally we get the bishop to e6 out. 
Okay, so yeah, we can definitely think about how to approach this kind of opening. One thing that's very common, so this is the first move, knight c6, where actually we have, I think, a few options. Um, we can go knight d7, knight c5. And I think a lot of players would consider this move here, so that you could put your bishop on b7, because this is really the last piece that black needs to kind of figure out. Um, is the bishop doesn't really have a natural square, except for b7 is a very good one, where you attack the e-pawn. And you also threaten b4. So if white plays like queen d2 or something, this is like a very typical Sicilian trick where you attack the knight and then the pawn drops. So definitely look out for this one. So let's say white plays something like f3, we play bishop b7. And here you can kind of play to develop your knight to different squares, either d7, c5, or e5. Your rook can come to c8, and then you can get kind of typical. Sicilian counterplay like on the C file. Usually the two, the, the two ideas are either to play for D5 or B4. Pretty much one of these moves. So that would be how I kind of recommend to play this position. I would go B5 here and put the bishop on B7 first because if you play Knight D7, this is kind of the difference. Let's say F3 and then B5. This is where you have to be a little bit careful. This move Knight C6 can be pretty annoying. So this one, I think we will kind of want to watch out for. That's why black often plays b5 with the knight still on b8. Because you're covering the square and then you can play bishop b7 and then the knight can come out after. Yeah. No, the bishop on b7 is very good because it's going to be putting pressure on this pawn. And from black's point of view, if you have this kind of structure with the f3 chain, you're kind of happy that this pawn is on f3, even though it's restricting your bishop. What it's not doing, it's not taking away the e5 square from your knight. So that's kind of the problem from, from white's point of view. Either the pawn is going to f4, and it controls the e5 square, but e4 is weak, or it has to stay on f3, and then black is able to put their knight on e5, which is generally a really, really nice square. So you're kind of happy either way. And yeah, of course, rook comes to c8. And again, we're playing for the d5 pawn break, or maybe b4 first, and then playing for uh, for d5, and then play on the uh, the c file. And white will be playing for the king side. Um, so yeah, that's how I would kind of play the uh, late opening, early early middle game here. So knight c6, I think, is also totally fine. Um, and then... Yeah, we go for e5 here. I'm not sure. Sometimes this move, I think, is very playable. And I think it is playable here. But the nice thing about this pawn on e6 is that you're really blunting white's bishop. Right? This bishop is just doing very little against this pawn chain. And it feels like it's biting on granite. So I would actually want to keep this one here and either play like bishop d7, bishop c6. Or again, I'd probably go for b5 here. And put the bishop on b7, look to play b4, rook c8, maybe d5 one day, and kind of go for this approach. And meanwhile, white's bishop on b3 is doing very little. If they want to play like f4 and f5 and try to awaken their bishop, then, then the e4 pawn becomes a big target. Or maybe we can even play b4 here. And once again, we have this nice trick where white is just losing the, uh, the e pawn. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I'm just saying how I probably would have approached the opening. Because I really like these two pawns. Because they control all these central squares. And then your pieces kind of play around them. So I think it's a, it's a cool structure. Um, yeah, once we do play e5, yeah, the problem is we are kind of giving up this square and we're opening up the bishop on this diagonal. So we're kind of improving like two of white's pieces. I think one way to follow up maybe would have been knight g4, because then at least you get to uh, take the dark sword bishop. And that would be kind of cool for black to take this bishop off the board. Um, but the way we kind of get it, I would say white ends up 
White ends up a little bit better here because they just get this nice control over the d5 square. Although it's still not... Uh, uh, it, the game is, of course, far from over. But um, yeah, here it kind of feels like white has won the strategic battle because now their two bishops are a little bit better and yeah, seems like kind of a small advantage. Weird how white <laughs> dropped back <laughs> and then bishop b6 goes back, bishop d5. Yeah, loses some time here. <laughs> Wow, it looks like things got very tactical. But rook d3, unfortunately, kills all of black's ideas. Oh, it didn't see bishop c1, wow. So queen c3, you're like, my opponent's gonna resign here <laughs> because because they have no move. <laughs> That's funny. And then after bishop c1, did you spend time or what happened? Did you blitz out bishop g5? Because you can also take on f3. I mean, might might be kind of a yummy pawn to take. It's all of white's other pawns get a little bit weak. After that was all tell. You see, that's what Jesse says. He says mistakes come in pairs. So our first mistake is that we didn't see our opponent's resource, bishop c1. That's fine. That's going to happen. Our second mistake though, and this is the one you can control, is that once we mess up, we just start playing faster. Whereas maybe what we should be doing is slowing down and kind of re reassessing the situation and just taking a step back. Um, so yeah, and then if we take here, I think, I think we're doing very nicely. Um, Rook C8 maybe, let's see. See, maybe white can at least keep material equality with queen d3, and then we don't get our pawn, which is very sad. I think black is probably kind of okay here, but it'd be nice to grab a pawn and force your opponent to prove something for it. So yeah, queen c3 is definitely a very good move still. Yeah. Without queen c3, I think black gets very little here. But then, uh, okay, we just had to, we just had to keep our composure. Yeah, bishop g5 again, yeah, looks good, but the opponent has their own ideas, yeah? And so then it doesn't work out. And, and that's it, now it's game over. Now we're losing the piece, unfortunately, because queen and bishop are both hanging. So it shows we have to look out for the opponent's resources. A uh, very important thing in chess. One of the most important, in fact, is just looking like saying like, I want to play this move. What can they do? What can they do? I think very, very important skill to, uh, to think about. Yeah, no, you're definitely not the only one. Happens to everybody all the time. <laughs> Yeah. Well, GG, thanks for submitting. I hope that was um, helpful in terms of how to kind of handle these positions. Again, I would go for these plans with B5, Bishop, B7. I think these are the way to, the way to play. Wow, see, so he's doing all the puzzles upside down. That's kind of funny. That makes sense though. Okay, I'm gonna go to um, V Prahara. Are we are we still in chat? I'm gonna find your game. Did you have any specific questions about the game?
Okay, struggling with the opening. So let's take a look. C4, E6. So what was the, uh, the issue exactly? Well, it looks like we gave up a lot of space. I like knight g4. But yeah, this might not be what we want, right? Giving up ton of space. So what to do against c4? Um, well, let me ask you this. What do you do against d4? Do you also play like e6 and d5, this kind of thing? Or what opening do we play against d4? Because usually that's what you're going to be kind of more comfortable with against c4. Oh, you play Slav. Oh, okay. So yeah, then against c4, I would go with uh, c6. And then d4, you can go d5. And then if they do some other stuff, like knight c3, you can also go d5 here and kind of play your normal Slav setup with knight f6, e6. Or sometimes with bishop f5, depending on what they do. So... Yeah, I would go with this one. <clears throat> yeah, and this is pretty solid. Whether they go like g3 or knight f3, you can pretty much do this kind of thing against pretty much everything. Only thing is some players, you know, might go e4 against you. Now we're playing like a uh, Karo Khan. You might get like a pawn of attack, but I don't think this line is so dangerous. I think you should just be willing to, to play this one because it's not that bad for black. Or if you really want to, you can play knight f6 here and then play for c6. But if white plays knight c3, you got a problem because they're going to play e4 and take a lot of space. So... You have to be careful and not, not let white take all the space here. So that's why many players would rather just play d5 here or e5 and fight for the center. If you want an asymmetric position against c4, should you try e5? Yeah, I mean, e5 definitely is uh, one of the best moves. Just like reverse Sicilian. But I think black is definitely okay here. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fight for the center. I think that's usually a good idea in the opening. Yeah. Yeah, because in the game, what happens is white plays e4, it just gets a big center. And now... Now this is a problem. Now we're basically playing like a hippopotamus opening and yeah, we have to do crazy things like F5, you know, to fight back against the center. But of course it's uh, very tough at this point and it feels like white is, white is better. Although <laughs> we got some nice counter plays, crazy King D8. Uh, could we go d5 for black? Yeah, you could. Um, I still think white typically gets an edge with like takes, takes, and e5. This kind of thing, and just gets big space advantage, and yeah, bishop on b7 doesn't feel so good. So I would usually like white in this kind of thing. All right, V Prahar, let me know if you have any other questions on this game. Yeah. Uh, Samantha, I mean, it really, you know, it depends. 
yeah, it's really hard to kind of have a rule that will work 100% of the time. But generally sacrificing pieces is kind of rare, unless you can uh, open up the opponent's king and, and try to get a big attack. Um, when do we lock the center? Again, it kind of depends. <laughs> like, you know, if, if you played something, let's say a little bit more quiet, like d6, for example, and, and then white goes d5, then yeah, maybe you want to play e5 to keep the center closed and you can get your f5 pawn break for the eventual closed position. But in a different position, like if, if white goes e5, does that mean you want to go d5? No, I don't think so. I think maybe we take on g2 here, maybe we take on e5, right? We have other options. So it's very hard to just give you, you know, rules here that will work all of the time. Just really depends on the different structures you get. But my advice would be, you know, experiment with different things and then analyze your games afterwards, I guess, like we're doing here and see like, okay, was this a good decision? Was this a good decision? How should I have played this position or that position? And I think, I think over time you slowly build up a um, kind of understanding of similar, similar structures. Uh, okay, well, GG. All right, let's see, next. Okay, Chess Master, are we still in the chat? Cool, I got your game. So what um, what questions uh, did you have on this game? Where did you mess up? Um, yeah, you can put, um, it can be from any site. It doesn't matter for the game. It can be a Lee Chess link or chess.com or whatever. Okay, where did I mess up? So I assume you were playing white here because white lost the game. So let's see, we got a scan D with knight C3. Black plays queen d8, so it goes all the way back. So we keep developing. That seems good. Oh, you play black. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. So bishop f5. e6. Bishop e7. It seems like we play pretty solid, but let's see what happened. So you ended up winning a pawn and white white resigned because I guess they didn't like their position after bishop takes e2. So good game. But uh, yeah, let's see where maybe we could have improved black's play. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I think you played pretty well. Uh, I'm not sure if you had to trade on e5. Maybe, for example, we could have also played knight b6 and tried to put our knight on the d5 square. But uh, I don't mind that you took on e5. Even though white gets this pawn on e5, I don't think this is actually that dangerous. And you can bring your knight around to a different square like you did. Um, so bishop g6. Yeah, bishop g6 maybe feels a little slow. Like, why are we making this move? Yeah, like, maybe we have a more useful, like, maybe you could play knight b6 right away. Maybe this would be a more useful move for black. So maybe bishop g6 is the one move that's maybe a little bit slow. But 
um, yeah, after queen d2, knight b6. Things look good. Probably white should have played bishop b3 here to keep, uh, to keep the bishop alive. b3 I don't like because it lets you grab the bishop and weaken white's pawns. And you get to win a pawn as well. So it just looks, turns out to be great in game for, for black. Queen d8 mainstream? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's one of three moves that people play here. I don't think it's so great, to be honest. Because I feel like we're just undeveloping our queen and... I don't know. It's kind of solid, but it's a little bit uninspiring. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but okay, in general, I'm not a huge Scandi fan. Yeah, I think it's a simple opening, but just not my favorite. All right, Chessmaster, GG. Uh, let's see, let's keep going. All right, Alex Bab. Is Alex Bab in the chat? Oh, Wrath of God's awesome. All right. So what was, uh, what was uh, your question on this game? Do you have any questions on this game? All right, so we got Wrath of Gods, who's 1800. And then opponent is 2000. So when to play H3? G3 or G4. So this is an OTB game. Was it a uh, what was the time control? Classical time control? Yeah, really complicated middle game. All right, we can go back. Just kind of wanted to see what happened. Ninety plus thirty, gotcha. All right, so yeah, these H six lines have become very popular nowadays, where Black just tries to go G five in every position. Um, honestly, I'm not totally sure how to handle them exactly because I don't really play the Italian game myself and yeah this is kind of a completely new new thing um so I don't know <laughs> to be honest so g4 knight d7 knight f1 we drop back knight went to e6 seems like the opponent knew what he was doing um I know there's one plan to go knight f1 early. This is uh, some classic Steinitz stuff. Steinitz used to use this plan. And then his idea was to put the knight on e3 
and then play like for h4, h5. So if black would play like knight d7 here, he would go knight e3, knight c5, here, knight e6, and then he'd go h4. And then the idea would be to play h5, try to get your opponent to play g5, and then you get the f5 square. So maybe this is an interesting plan uh, to look at, though I'm, yeah, very clueless on the theory in these positions. F5, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, definitely a possibility. Oh, after h4 even? Sure. Um, then I would probably continue h5 as white. And then... Um, Feels like black might have trouble on the light squares. Because if we go g5, then I think minimum we can take. And that looks nice. Or knight takes maybe. And then if f4, then it seems like we still get some play on the light squares. Maybe knight d5, g5, I don't know, super complicated position, but seems like we have some pressure as white. Maybe knight h2, and then knight g4. But yeah, it's really complicated. Um, again, I wish I could give you more of a guideline how to play uh, the position. But I honestly don't, I just not really sure myself. So I can't give you something like super concrete, like just play this plan and this plan and, and then you're good. Um, I'm, yeah, definitely not sure about G4, just the way things turn out. Feels like black gets to this F4 square and it's it's pretty annoying. Oh, cool, John Drip. Cool, cool. Nicely done. So, yeah, it looks like it was a uh, crazy game. Wow. And he takes H5. <laughs> like, super sharp opposite sides castling game. I just want to see what happens. Oh, got F6. Unfortunate. Crazy game. I mean, looks like it, it was going well for you, though. I mean, this all looked very scary for Black. Yeah, definitely looked like white had a really strong attack. I assume you've already analyzed it with uh, with the engine, so it can probably tell you, you know, <laughs> exactly what you missed better than I can. But if there's any um, interesting lines you want to ask about, we could uh, we could take a look. I think what you did, I mean, overall was was pretty reasonable. It's hard to say objectively how good it was, but I mean, we end up getting this pawn and very reasonable attacking position. There was made in one. Wow. Feels like 
feel like black was in time. So here we get G takes F6, black goes rook A1 check, and then check, and then check, and then takes, and then white threatens main in one here, but black has bishop D5 check. And then next move takes on F6. Uh, yeah, John, you can you can send in uh, whatever game you like. Um. Yeah, yeah, these positions are very. I think they're relatively unexplored. And they're pretty fresh. But I would I would check out this one, knight f1, this plan with knight e3 and h4. I would see if there's anything to this. Yeah, Mad Bobbage, actually I did a um a whole series on YouTube about how to learn any opening that I would uh, I would refer you to that in terms of how to like learn new openings and what my approach would be how to learn any opening that's right you got to search it on our YouTube channel youtube.com slash chess dojo Hmm, indeed. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing about this g4 plan is that generally the idea is to put the knight on f5, right? But that's very hard with against the pawn on g6. Um, but here I think g4 kind of comes with a lot less, less sting. Uh, yeah, actually, um, editing a chessable course this month that's coming out on uh, in-game in-game puzzles, in-game studies. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the game, Wrath of Gods. Uh, let's go to let's go to the next one. Okay, next one from Demon. Is Demon still around? Yeah, absolutely. What's the rating range for the course? I, I don't know, I tried to make it pretty accessible. So the point would be is that it kind of breaks down in-game studies into different levels so that people get an easier intro into the the world of endgame studies all right demon is around cool and demon said they had a question about move six uh yeah new sort yeah um i announced it on twitter and i think in the discord I'm gonna have a course released on Chessable pretty soon. Okay. So let's see what happens. So e4, e5, d4, knight c6. So black could, could have taken the pawn and then maybe we play c3 here or do we go queen takes d4? Not sure. d4, knight c6, knight f3, knight f6, takes, and oh, we want a piece. Okay, nice job, demon. 
took the piece, knight takes e4, and then we played f3 here. So you're saying move six, this is where we're unsure. Yeah, hmm. Well, we won a piece, Demon. So at this point, not sure if we need this move f3, like attacking the knight. I would say let's just develop our pieces, bishop c4, for example. And then we develop the bishop, we attack the weakest square in the opening, f7, we get ready to castle. Like, how much more do you want from one move? You develop a piece, you attack something, you get ready to castle, you get your rook in. Seems pretty good. There are probably better moves as well. Like, queen d5 looks like a cool move, because you attack the knight, and you threaten checkmate all at once. And if knight g5 defending, then we can remove the defender with... Bishop takes g5. And then we get to win this f7 pawn and looks pretty, pretty nice for white. Maybe you could win another pawn with this move. And taking the queen. Yeah, so lots of good moves here. We got queen d5, we got bishop c4. The key thing, Demon, is that in the opening, we're trying to get our pieces out. Now, we grabbed a pawn, which I think was very good, because this pawn was hanging. And then we won a piece, which was also very good. And then here, we lost sight of what was important which is to develop pieces, to active squares. You wouldn't really want to develop knight to a3, for example, this just looks bad. Or like bishop b5, bishop doesn't really do a whole lot here. So we want to try to develop pieces to squares where they attack stuff. And then we're hitting f7 and yeah, getting ready to castle. This move is also okay, once again. All about those targets in the opening. So f3, yeah, we usually don't want to make this move in the opening unless we have a very good reason. So knight c5. Yeah, maybe black could have been a little bit more tactical themselves, right? With queen h4 check. And this would have been very, very unpleasant. This would not have been fun for us. g3, knight takes. <laughs> and why it would be like, oops. <laughs> so this is how it's very important to watch out for F3 because exactly this, exactly this happens. Yeah. It's a very, very troubling move. And if black goes F6, then we would want to try to do the same thing. So kind of cool how chess works. Oh no, we play bishop e5. Yeah, what are we doing over here? We want to put the bishop here where we have a clear target. Oop, looks like knight was hanging. So we forgot about our knight, unfortunately. Then we got our other knight into the game. That's good. Knight f6. Oops. Black can take that one. Yeah, Demon, we got to take care of our pieces. We lost so many knights in this game. Knights are supposed to be our friends, Demon. We don't want to lose them. So here we had one knight under attack. And we didn't notice. We lost him. And then we had a second knight that was doing better. I like this knight on e4, but then we lost this knight too, because we weren't careful. So we really got to be careful. We got to watch where the opponent's pieces are aiming at. Very important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand. So what would have been better? Maybe immediate c3. 
to hit the bishop. And then we could try to keep our getting our pieces out. Queen can come to b3, rook could come to d1, maybe bishop c4 one day. We attack this f7 pawn. Things could still be pretty fun for white. Because at least our king is safe. Black's king is in the center, still very vulnerable to the attack. But our king would be pretty safe on h1, so I'd actually still very much like your position here. Oh, looks like it was a tough game, but ends up in a nice checkmate. Yeah, definitely need to slow down Demon. I totally agree. Yeah, we got to slow down a lot. All right, um, let's keep it going. Thanks, Demon, for the game. All right, next one, who we got? Eric Ido. Yes. You messaged me, but there's no game, Eric. Eric, where's the game? <laughs> We're ready for you. Uh, yeah, everyone can submit a game. You could submit a link uh, via LeeChess or chess.com. You can do that by whispering uh, Chess Dojo Live on Twitch or whispering to me in the Discord. I'm very easy to find in the Discord because I'm at the very, very top, very top of the list. All right, we're going to go to someone. We're going to go to the next, next person. That's okay, Eric. No worries. All right, next one. Uh, JSAD. Is JSAD still here? So what was this game? I'm not sure if we got the full game JSAD. I only have up to 28 moves. Oh, okay, so what was this game? Were we playing white, black? What was the opponent's rating? And what was the time control? All right, black against 2000, cool. And what's our OTB rating? Ninety plus five, eighteen hundred. All right, cool. All right. So, any questions about this game? Ooh, exchange slot. Okay, I can see that this is going to be painful. She feels like we played pretty solid. Man, feels like it was a very clean game from the opponent. Um, my guess is you want to know like where you could have done better, yeah? Let's 
seems like it was super yeah yeah sometimes this happens in the exchange slav and it's uh can be quite unpleasant actually it's a big question for black hmm I do think your position here is like not that bad, especially with like two knights against bishop and knight. I feel like you should be okay. Um, knight h5, yeah, doesn't doesn't feel right to me at first, just because I feel like the position we end up in after the trade. Okay, clearly only white can be better here, right? It's like totally symmetrical, equal material, but uh, white's pieces are all developed and connected and, and black isn't. So maybe you're able to hold this after queen d7, but at least we're, we're slightly, slightly worse at the very least. Just passive. Um, e5 is a hard move to make happen, but could be a thought because there are some tactics with takes and night takes. But I'm not sure if it fully works out. Maybe queen c2. And uh, if we just trade rooks, we're kind of left with the isolated queen pawn. So. Yeah, not sure if I would go for e5, because we're always left with this isolated pawn. Yeah, some kind of fight of uh, the queen side needed here. Yeah, knight d3 at the end, uh, I didn't think it was such a big deal. Queen d4, everything is kind of defended. If takes, takes. And uh, yeah, d5 is kind of weak. You could say that e3 is also weak, but um, yeah, in general, white is usually at least slightly better here. Yeah. Um, so not, not a ton of fun. Like maybe black is equal, but Definitely not fun for black. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Knight d7 seems tempting because we're kind of kicking white back a bit. So let's say rook c2. And it would make sense to try to fight for the C file with something like knight a5. But it feels like white is usually going to be quite happy here. Knight c4, there's b3. So. I mean, I don't think black is really, like, all that worse here. Like, we're a little bit passive, but I don't don't think it's really critical. Material is still equal, and, and white still needs a couple moves before they start making any kind of real threats. It's just a little bit passive. That's kind of the big thing. It's just somewhat passive and unpleasant and... Um, yeah, in the game, I think we play this f6 move. Like, my guess is to play for e5, but I feel like this is probably kind of weakening. Uh, what we should be trying to do is somehow liquidating stuff on the c file, like queen d7. Um, but uh, already here, I would say it's, yeah, quite feels quite unpleasant for black as it is. 
But then things kind of get worse, like this f6, b5, this just ends up weakening very much. Um, so things kind of go from bad to, uh, to worse at these parts. Should black trade the dark square bishop instead of the knight on c5? I don't know. I mean, the bishop is... Um, pretty important. If we take on f4, then we're left with the knight on c5, which is pretty good, I think. So this feels, this feels unpleasant for for black. So yeah, Jay said, you got to figure something out about this exchange slot because otherwise this will keep happening because people really love this kind of play where they just go for their knight a4, knight c5, and they just try to like slowly squeeze you. So I don't have a ton of experience in these positions, so I can't give you like a ready-made answer to all this. I know there are different ways of playing these positions, like some players like to play with g6, bishop g7. And then the idea here is to eventually go knight e4. And this is kind of like a different way to play it. But um, yeah, in this structure, I don't know. We got to figure it out. Although I do think you were pretty much fine in the game. I actually don't think you did anything so wrong until maybe knight h5 to me feels like the first moment that maybe things start to go wrong. I still feel like here on knight d7, rook c2, we should be okay. Like we don't necessarily have to go knight a5. Um... We can also play like knight e7 here, for example. And maybe try to trade off on the c file this way. Uh, yeah, Wrath of Gods, I was thinking about that as well, but I think it's not so easy because um, the problem is white is going to land on c7. Yeah. So. It's uh it's passive here. Like knight d3 for example. And trying to play knight e5. So it feels very very unpleasant. Yeah, so let's say knight c6. Let's say we take. Then we go knight c5. And then this one is maybe coming. Thanks, Keyshawn. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, V Prahar. Well, I mean, I feel like Chessable sells books. So, you know, <laughs> to me, books and Chessable courses are very similar. Because a lot of books, they just become Chessable courses. So, it just depends on whatever format you prefer. Like, some people prefer the online format, some people prefer physical books. Whatever gets you to read the book, you know, whatever gets you to just read, read the thing, go through the, go through the material. If it gets you to learn, then that's, that's the best value. <laughs> so personally, I like books and courses. Either one is fine. Yeah, but it's kind of up to you. Um, well, Steve, I mean, when Black plays the Slav, if White wants to take here, then we have to recapture with the c-pawn and, and go into this kind of structure. 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah, Jay said, I mean, this is one of the big questions for Slav players because most are pretty annoyed by these exchange lines. And for the most part, they're solid for black, but they're, um, yeah, can get kind of uh, unfortunate and a little bit, a little bit passive. Cool, Keyshawn, cool. Yeah, Steve, I mean, here the plan is usually to play on the queen side. So both sides try to get their knight a5, rook c8, knight c4 play in, b5, and this kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe that was a thought here as well. To play knight a5. Um, like square bishop, I mean, it's gonna be played to g6 and get traded off, so definitely not a terrible piece. Oh wait, there's rook takes c8 here. Mm. So yeah, yeah, not so simple. Yeah, I feel like actually I kind of like how you played it up until knight h5, I think around here and then we should be okay from this point. F6, E5 can be, but it's it's weakening. You know, whenever we play F6 and E5, we're always going to be weakening this one. So, got to be careful. Yeah. Jay said, I'm going to look up your game in the database because I'm curious how how people play this one. See if we're missing anything. Yeah, I think we more or less played it fine. Um, even even Knight H5, oh, apparently not so bad. But then F6, we started going very wrong as that was kind of weakening.
Another possibility was to um, maybe maybe play bishop g6 earlier before rook c8 just to get this plan going with trading off the bishops and then trying to get your knight to c4. Maybe you can do that a tempo sooner. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was just talking out loud, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't uh, wasn't using the board. All right, Jay said. Hope that helps. Uh, interesting game. Very good one you submitted because those are exactly the kind of games that can give us the most trouble, and those are the ones worth going into. Okay, Giant Solemn, um, I think I'll need the link to the game because the whole thing doesn't fit in the, uh, in the Whisper. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I can wait a sec for the link if you have the link to the game. Oh, is this an OTB game? Oh, that's cool. All right, see you, Vipahara. cool no worries we will go to the next one then all right mcc 2k are we still uh in the chat you're up next. Let me know if you're still around. Uh, and then we'll do sets game. Uh, Crow, it means I will be training. <laughs> In a to be determined format. I don't know what I'm gonna do, <laughs> but I'll be I'll be training myself. I think. Yeah. All right, MCC two K last call. MCC two K. Uh, Seth, I'm back in St. Louis for the uh, Chess 960 event, the Champion Showdown. So I've been coming here a lot lately. I've been going back and forth pretty much. Um, actually, Seth, it's uh, you're up next. So let's take a look. Uh, any specific questions on, on this game, Seth? I know this was an OTB game from Colorado Open. How did you finish, by the way? I, I, know, I know Drew did good. He got four out of five. Which is awesome. How did we uh, end up? And what was the opponent's rating? Three rounds. Cool. Not sure. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Uh, 
how to find out what our opponent wants. Well, have we tried asking them nicely? Maybe if we just ask, they would be more willing to share. Oh yeah, we got we got a little bit in trouble out of the opening here. And then bishop g5, that looks like that was uh, fortunate. Um, so yeah, this is kind of a sharp opening where white plays, oops, knight c3 and then plays for e4. So what we gotta do here, I think is we gotta play d5 and fight for the center. And then if they go e5, the idea is that you can play d4 and kind of counterattack. It's kind of a funny line, but like takes, takes, and then you recapture with the queen and get your pieces out like b6, bishop b7, bishop somewhere, knight d7, and actually black gets, I think, a pretty reasonable position here. Maybe this bishop goes to d6. Um, so yeah, in this opening, very important to fight for the center very quickly. And then yeah, on e5, you gotta remember this d4 idea. Um, c5, yeah, allows white to take a lot of space and then gets a little murky. Although, I like d6. I like that you just immediately challenged e5. I think that's important. I, I don't think it's that easy for white to um, actually get an advantage here. Although now, yeah, definitely should have taken this one. <laughs> Hit this one. You go bishop f6 and okay, you try to try to develop... But bishop g5, that was, uh... okay, nice gift, knight b5. I see, now things are still kind of uh, scary. Yeah, not so easy to deal with black's problems here, feels like. Yeah, you could go queen d8. But then takes king somewhere. Still a little bit, a little bit unpleasant. Like this is not an easy position to handle, even though we have uh, the extra piece. Like this can still go very wrong for black. A big threat. Yeah, knight c6 is a move. Knight c6 is always a move. Just depends <laughs> whether it's a good move. Here, I'm not sure. Because um, queen f4 and lots of little threats. But maybe we're. But it's definitely a move to consider. I mean, 100%, like developing with tempo. Um, well, yeah, it kind of depends. So here, I don't know. Maybe not as good. Yeah, so it really depends. But it's always a move to consider. It's always a move. I mean, developing with tempo, like, for sure. It's just, is it a good move? Hard to say. <laughs> you gotta calculate from there. That's that's the key question. Yeah, Eric, that's, uh, that's what Seth did. But it, it seems like Seth was not happy with queen takes e5 because he, uh, he gives it a double question mark. Or was this the uh, chess.com engine? I actually, I don't think it's such a dumb idea because um, we are already up the piece. And then um, the knight seems like it should get trapped on a8. Oh, okay, yeah, so let's say you played here and then knight took, or you know, why would take? And then let's say we uh, just try to win the knight with like uh, knight d7 here, let's say. And then our idea is to go b6 and bishop b7. So like if castles will play here, then we wanna do this one. Hmm. I don't know, yeah, I don't think it's so, uh, so crazy.
yeah yeah so this isn't this isn't so bad i think though maybe if we can just keep the extra piece that would be ideal my guess is this wasn't a intended sacrifice we just kind of blundered it <laughs> which, which is unfortunate we don't want to do that we want to be on top of this thing um 96 is also move but um again i think these positions are all going to be similar like white takes on d6 and then gets compensation because our king is weak but knight a6 is definitely a move and queen d8 is also similar so yeah i don't see anything seriously wrong with knight a6 oh, okay seth so you you went for this willingly yeah then i think it's not not the craziest decision, except I would have tried to um, go after the knight. Or on, after king e7 takes, another way would be to play knight a6 to cover the escape square. And then once again, b6, bishop, b7 would be the plan. I think this would be reasonable uh, once again as well. And then eventually developing with knight of 6 Go. Thanks for the bits. Knight is six. Yeah, c5. But then, okay, white has to give up another pawn. So, yeah, we don't win the piece, but at least we got another pawn. And now we have two pawns for the exchange. Not the healthiest two pawns, but some, some compensation here, at least. Not the easiest position for white to handle. Um, but, yeah, is it better than keeping the extra piece i'm not sure uh really hard to say my instincts would be either knight a6 or queen d8 but uh yeah this is always scary as well but let's take a look queen takes d6 knight e7 white goes rook d1 threatening checkmate and black seems to be in time with castles but there's always like weird you know h4 there's always weird stuff that could happen and <laughs> you end up, but I think we're still somewhat okay here. Take this one with check and yeah, now White's King is a little bit awkward. I, I don't know what's going on. Crazy position. But uh, yeah. How to make a decision, huh? Hard to say. Yeah. Yeah, what I like to do to warm up is try to show up to the board a couple minutes early and just start like calculating. And just just warming up the brain by like visualizing stuff. I find that it's pretty useful. Just show up to the board, start visualizing whatever opening you think you might get, and just get the brain going. I feel like it definitely helps with in-game performance. Yeah. Bummer. Tough moment. Feels like we got some compensation. So that was cool. Maybe we had some tactics though. Yeah, knight takes a2. Win some more material. Because this one is defending this one and defending this one. So we call that... Overloaded. Rook A1. 
Huh, but then we take and then maybe we go a5, defend this one, keep the attack alive, try to go after white spawns next. If rook takes a7, then we we have knight takes e2 with check. I think it, it doesn't work. And then uh, and then we got rook d7, yeah, to defend everything. Uh, why not take the piece first? Uh, which one, Eric? Because on... Here, I didn't want to take e2 because rook takes a7, and we can't... Uh, we can't save save the bishop. That was the that was the problem. So that's why I wanted uh, e5. Yeah. Oh, so you're calculating knight takes a2. So you didn't like rook a1, Seth? Is that what happens? And then where exactly did we? Where exactly do we get stuck? Yeah guys, gotta warm up with some tactics before you show up to the stream. Oh, I see, Seth. Yeah, Machacos, we were we were just looking at these lines. I agree. Takes an A5, and I think Black is doing doing all right. Pretty good, actually, because I mean we have two pawns, and White C pawns are pretty weak. Yeah. So we missed 92. Yeah. So we got it. We need more clarity, Seth, and our. OTB calculation. We want to be like visualizing this position very clearly in our minds. And then we see Rick takes a seven. And then, you know, when you're looking at a position straight up, it's not too hard to see the checks and captures. But the fact that we didn't see it means that we weren't visualizing all that clearly. Because when we're visualizing, we have, uh, have a very good picture of all of our checks and captures. So we're just immediately aware of them. So yeah, sounds like a problem with visualization seems like. Yeah, so we need, we need to get more clarity. Uh, 94, yeah, also interesting. So let's see what happens, takes, takes. Takes, takes, and yeah, white doesn't end up with the same. We still get a little bit of play, but white's pawns end up a lot healthier here, you know? Um, I still think it's honestly still not that easy for white. Maybe we could have done b5. 
and uh, try to keep some kind of blockade going. Yeah. Definitely not so easy. Because it's hard for white to push a4, you know, without dropping the beep on. And if rook d1, if you had to trade rooks, then that would be tough, but you can go bishop d3 here and then e4 and f5 and kind of get get a nice little like stranglehold. Yeah. Yeah, I think this was still uh, very possible, very playable. Like, okay, black is probably still worse, but um, honestly, it's not not easy for the rooks here, you know, because they don't really have a lot of open files. So where's the value in having the rook, right? Black's bishop controls just as many important squares and doesn't really feel like black's pieces are all that worse. Also, you're playing with the king and white isn't, so you have an extra piece in the position. Which is kind of cool. So yeah, interesting end game. Oh, white can lose. I think white can lose any position. <laughs> You'd be surprised. There's always a way to lose. I mean, even without without dumb blunders, there's always like a logical way to lose. <laughs> You just need to have the right player to uh, to figure out how to do it. Because you can you can always over push as white and and then allow a lot of counterplay. You know that's kind of like how does white lose this? They go here and then they try to play f3, king f2. Let's say here. takes oh sorry it's not, not a good move maybe here and then I don't know somewhere white like blunder something and loses the game it happens oh he offered a draw after bishop f3 wow interesting he didn't take it that is spirited I definitely would have considered taking it <laughs> Another thing to consider would have been maybe e4 in this position. Because if they take your knight, then you're kind of fighting along the light squares. And if they take here, then you hit the rook. So rook takes b4, rook takes a2, then white structure is weak. There is c5 though, which is unfortunate. Although I don't know, bishop d3, maybe you're actually... No, it gets pretty messy. Who knows? Who knows what's happening? And rook d1, b5. White should still be better here. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know. Play a pretty solid game. But yeah, it does feel like we're worse here. Although, back here, knight takes a2. Then I think black is kind of better.
Chess Ninja, I would take the tactical vision. 100%. <laughs> Easy. If I had the best tactics, dude, I would be world champion. 100%. Yeah, Mad Babbage, I wasn't sure about that one. Um, let's see. Kind of a crazy line, but because uh, takes, white pushes, we go here, and then uh, white saves. Oh, and then we have bishop a6, yeah? And black saves the game. Yeah, it looks like this uh, this definitely holds for black. At least, I mean, black is a uh, pawn up. No. So yeah, bishop takes f1. That looks much more solid than just recapturing. It's a fun line though. b7, rook a1. <laughs> And White has no way to deal with the back rank successfully. BA queen, right, bishop b5, very, very cute detail. I mean, you could win with bishop d3 as well, but not as pretty. Bishop b5, that's how, that's how you end up in the tactics books, getting this kind of move on the board. <laughs> bishop b5 is dirty. Yeah, bishop b5 is not allowed. Not allowed. Too dirty. <laughs> well, GG, Seth. Thanks for submitting the game. Let's see where we at. All right, we'll do one more game from uh, Enschne. Though um, it's hard to get the full game in a whisper. So if you could actually just send me a Lee Chess link, that would be better. Actually, maybe, maybe we can. Hey, my Chacos, the five months. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's September. September. 20% off gifted subs, guys. Because the word sub is similar to the word September. So just like that, 20% off to sub to the channel.
All right, here we go. All right, Enchne, let me know if you had any specific questions on this game. And also, who are we playing? What color were we? And what was the time control? It's anonymous versus anonymous. NN versus NN. Yeah, Mad Babbage, I'll probably look at games another day. If uh, you don't get a chance today. Won't be the last one. Okay, Enchne is white. Cool. Opponent was 1500. AKA the villain. Time control is 80 plus 30, cool. Nice classical time control. All right, so we play the English with G3. Concerns are with uh, the opening. Got it. Yeah. So I'm not really sure why we're playing e3 here. Um, like, is the idea to take back on d4 with the pawn? Or what was the point here? Because if black wanted to, they could have taken on d4 earlier and forced you to take back with the piece. Yeah, which would be totally fine. And I think there's actually not much reason that we need our pawn on e3. I think a lot of times this pawn wants to be either on e2 or on e4. Maybe you want to take space or maybe you want to leave it behind. But e3 doesn't really seem to be a necessary move here. Yeah, because actually I think you, even here, I think you actually want to take back with a piece. Because then your knight can be very strong on d4. And you can try to use this f5 square. You keep this diagonal open for your other bishop. And then your dark square bishop is very happy. So I would have just continued here like bishop b2. Like you played b3 to develop the bishop, right? So I would have just continued with that. Or you could play e4 and take a lot of space this way. And then if e takes d4, knight takes d4, your e4 pawn is well defended. You can follow up like bishop b2, queen d2, rook a d1, rook f1. I think this would be really good development for white. Yeah, so e3 maybe, the first move I would say maybe a little bit slow. Like we could have done something more useful with this move. Yeah. Yeah, either bishop b2 or e4 there and I think you're, you're doing well. I mean the point of this kind of position is that you're just controlling a lot of space. So we're playing bishop b2 here, e4, queen d2, Rook f e1, rook a d1, just very calmly improving our pieces, not trying to do a whole lot too quickly. Because we're playing a quiet opening, right? It's like a closed opening. We're not playing e4, we're trying to play like very aggressively and tactically and play for the attack. We're playing like c4, it's more calm, positional, slowly trying to build up. So, all right, let's keep going. So e3, rook e8, rook e1. B6, Queen C2, Bishop B7. So we finally play Bishop B2. Yeah, I would have done this a long time ago. Like I mentioned, we played B3, so we should follow that up and try to be consistent and put the Bishop on B2. That's where it wants to go. Okay, now Black plays C5. Get Knight B5, nice little tempo. Queen C6 and Knight H4, another tempo. Queen C8. We decide to trade bishops. Knight gets to f5. I like that. Queen b8. Take on e5. Rook ad1. Looks like we got a ton of pressure. I like how you play this very much. Knight e4. Okay, 
knight went back to d6, so we get a little bit confused here, but we keep a lot of pressure. Oh, nice. And then we traded this way, but we took on d7. And rooks got super active. Man, no, this was a really well played game. Like you double on the seventh rank. I, I think you did a lot of stuff very, very wisely here. F4, now opening up the bishop. Beautiful game. We won the piece and hopefully converted with ease. Yeah, nice. So, um, yeah, maybe we could have done better out of the uh, opening, but then once we got once we got this play on the D file, then I think things were pretty pretty smooth. So this C5 move your opponent played, I think you punished this one very nicely with knight B5 and then here. I think there are other ways to play it. You could consider D5, although we have to be careful of the tactics. Knight takes D5. I'm not sure if this works, but... Knight h4, maybe we're... Yeah, I have no idea what's happening here, but... Uh, I like how we played it as well. Trading the light squared bishops and then using the f5 square. And then opening up the d file and putting our rook here. So this one I liked. I like that you didn't just play d5. Because d5 looks very natural, but it closes the position. You're able to use your advantage in a different way by opening the position because you have a lead in development here and the open d file looked very very fruitful here for white so this is well played man yeah i don't know if you had any specific questions here maybe um maybe there was something better we could have done but i like that we dropped back to d6 and put the rook on d2 actually this was kind of cool And then queen trade was good, and then this knight e4 move was great, because you get your rooks on the 7th rank where they're super powerful. And black was just under pressure the rest of the game. Hey, what's up Drew? How's it going? So yeah, well played. Two more games, nice true. Well, it's cool you guys got to play some OTB. I'm looking forward to playing uh, next week in Vegas. It'll be fun again, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna hope for the best. I'm gonna try to do some training this week. So I'll be streaming most days in the morning and hopefully doing some training and working on my chess. Yeah, absolutely. No problem, man. All right, guys. I think that's going to be it for tonight. Uh, sorry if I didn't get to your game. I'll try to do more of these in the future. And uh, if I missed your game, uh, we'll try to get to it next time. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. What am I going to use for my training? I don't know. To be determined. I'm going to have to think about it. Yeah. Oh, next OTB title. OTB tournament is for a title. Uh, the key to that is to just focus on enjoying and learning from the games. And then the titles will come later. You're definitely not going to get a title every tournament. So, got to gotta learn to play for the love of the game. But, you know, good luck. <laughs> Hope you do well. All right, guys, we're going to uh, raid someone here. And then maybe I'll do some more work tonight. All right, who are we raiding? Who are we raiding?
Oh, let's raid Quaglon. Because guys, we're going to be playing in Quaglon's arena tomorrow. So tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific time, mark your calendars, 9 p.m. Eastern, we're gonna be playing a three plus zero arena as a team, as a club, chess dojo. We're gonna be representing the dojo and playing this arena. So I hope we get a good turnout. And that's being organized by Quaglon. So we're gonna go, go say hello. And I really gotta sneeze, but I'll do that after we raid. I <laughs> know, Michiko, good luck. <laughs> yeah, all good. Uh, but I'll be back tomorrow with some more streams. So uh, take care, everyone. See you next time.